Are y'all ready for this? Welcome to another episode of Frenesis. This is your host for this moment, Tim Gray, the pastor of the city of Zion. Have you been following us so far? If you've missed any episode on TBN, you can catch us on our Facebook or rather YouTube channel, um, Frenesis Africa. I've been talking about building your faith through prayer. And so far I've mentioned two key prayers that you need to pray daily to help build your faith. Again, I need to emphasize, please note, that all the faith you will ever need already resides in your spirit. As far as God is concerned, your spirit is one with Him, your spirit is one with Christ, your spirit is as Christ, and so all of His faith is already in your spirit. The challenge though is, your soul has not received the memo. And so the struggle, the tension, is translating the force, the overwhelming, insurmountable force of faith that is in your spirit, through your soul so that it can come out from your body into your world. How do we do that? We do that by the renewing of the mind and that is the mind of your soul. What confessions, what declarations, what prayers do we pray that, has, that put us in a position to strengthen our faith so that your soul does not resist the overflowing effect of faith that is coming from your spirit. What are the declarations? I've taught you in the last, um, over the last two weeks that one, you need to affirm God's love for you. I, there is so much more that I can say about that, but for the sake of time. And then number two, you need to affirm your oneness with God. We, look at, we looked at Colossians 2, verse 9 to 10, particularly from the Amplified Version, phenomenal, that says in verse 10, that we, by our union with Christ, we are filled with the same fullness. Colossians 2, 10 amplified says, you too are filled with fullness. If it says you too, what is he referring to? He was referring to verse 9, where it says that Jesus is filled with all of God. And as a result, Jesus gives a complete expression of the divine nature. He says, you too are filled with the same fullness of God. If that is the case, then I too give complete expression of the divine nature. How? The challenge is my soul does not yet believe that. So we need to consistently, and there lies the power of confession. We need to consistently declare. You wake up every, every moment you get, you declare it. I am loved by God the same way he loves Jesus. Therefore, God always comes through for me the same way he comes through for Jesus. And then you move to the second one. As he is so am I. You begin to declare that I too am filled with the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and I give complete expression of the divine nature. If as he is, so am I. What he's able to do, so can I. Just these ordinary, common sounding confessions will cause your soul to begin to mirror in expression your spirit. If your soul mirrors your spirit, it means all the faith in your spirit will be mirrored by your soul. And you will notice that your faith has escalated. But there is a third one. There is a third prayer that you and I need to daily embark on. All these things take you less than a minute. We need to pray them consistently. And just praying them at a time takes you less than a minute. But, but we need to set targets in, in, in place so that several times in the day we are making this declaration. But let me put on the table the third one. The Bible says to us in Jude verse 20, look at this. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praying in the Holy Ghost. Child of God, praying in the Spirit does not just mean speaking in tongues, but includes it. It also means declaring God's Word. That's praying in the Spirit and all of that. But when you speak in tongues, child 
of the Most High God. You build your faith. The Bible says building yourselves on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Every time you pray in tongues, you increase the capacity of your faith to produce results. Let's talk about speaking in tongues. I don't know if I can get to all of this, but if I don't, when we come back, we will continue. I want us now to really examine what, I've, what I want to refer to as tongues of fire. The clear natural distinction between the believer, the man or woman in Christ, and the world isn't seen in our good deeds. It isn't seen in our quality of work. It isn't seen in our church attendance. Neither is it seen in our acts of kindness. The clear natural distinction is actually in our unique ability to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is something the believer in Christ has that no one else does. Paul says, we speak in tongues of men and tongues of angels. You find that in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Speaking in tongues is a specialized release of divine possibilities given to the believer for the manifestation of the impossible upon the earth. I think I need to say that again slowly. Speaking in tongues is a specialized release of divine possibilities given to the believer for the manifestation of the impossible upon the earth. Jesus said we will be endued with power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon us. The sign that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit is with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon them like cloves of fire, like tongues of fire, and they spoke in tongues. Peter went into the house of Cornelius and by the time he was done, the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. The evidence that the Holy Spirit came upon them was what? They all spoke in tongues. When the Holy Spirit came upon Paul after when he was Saul and he was blinded and an and, and ass prayed for him and he was healed and the Holy Spirit came upon him, he spoke in tongues. Proof that you have filled, you are filled with the Holy Ghost is that there will be the evidence of speaking in tongues. The man in Christ must spend more time praying in the spirit than in his natural language. Paul was saying that I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than ye all. Maybe that's why Paul did more than all the others because he himself said that he prayed in tongues more than anyone else. The Bible tells us in Jude 20 that as we pray in tongues, we build our faith. This is phenomenal. We build our faith as we pray in tongues. Maybe that's why Paul was able to do so many phenomenal things. Maybe so, that's why some of the people that we, we, we look up to in the faith um, are able to do what they're able to do. Maybe it's because they are praying more in tongues than we are. Do you know that speaking in tongues is an idea generating activity? Because every time you speak in tongues, you are speaking the mind of God. Woo! And you are dealing with the mind that is fraught, that is filled with an assortment of ideas. Oh, Charlie Brahetskadaya. You've heard me say over and over again that it is there is no justification for the child of God to be stranded. The reason is because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 that Christ has been made unto us wisdom. We release that wisdom when we pray in tongues. As you are praying in tongues, you are sharpening your mind with the mind of Christ. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. He has answers to that problem. He has a plethora of ways to get you out, get you through, get you over. And we tell tap into that understanding, we tap into those fresh ideas when we pray in tongues. Haven't you observed that till today, new babies are being born in spite of all the history of people that have come into the world and yet no two people have the same fingerprints. Why? Because God is still full of fresh ideas. Child of God, 
pray in tongues. I'm, next time we're together, we will emphasize this a lot more because the more you pray in tongues, the stronger you realize your faith has become. I'm out of time. Child of God, pray in tongues. This has been Tim Grange, Senior Pastor of the City of Zion out here in Santa. I'll catch you again sometime soon on Furnaces. Bye for now. 